Hello. This video is going to be about agents. The large language model world, the generative AI world, is moving towards agentic designs. And in this video, you're going to understand about agents. How do you build agents on Google Cloud Platform? Agent Builder. Let's understand the history about how we reach to a point where everything that we think of today is around agents. Back in May 2024, in the Google I.O., the CEO of Google explained agents in this way. Agents are those applications, those programs that have reasoning, planning, and memory capabilities. This software, this system of agents can think multiple steps ahead and they can work across systems. Well, that was the definition. Let us understand these three things. Again, reasoning, planning, memory, think multiple steps ahead and work across systems. So let's quickly look at a history of LLM applications. So in the early days, there were only models. Back in 2022 November, when the entire generative AI world exploded and people started using this, it was mostly for fun. Honestly speaking, I'll give you an example. And this is a real world example that I faced. When I asked in December, 2022, the question to a model which did not know or wasn't trained on Langchain per se, or did not know Langchain because it was trained up to a certain point in time. When I asked, what is Langchain? It hallucinated and it says Langchain is a type of blockchain. Really? Not really, right? Because this model hallucinated. At that point in time, the generative AI Chat GPT's Bard, which was the previous version of Gemini, were used to mostly ask open-ended questions. Plan me a trip, write me a, an email, or write me a blog. And there were lots of hallucinations. The data was publicly available data that was trained. Then came the need of training these large language models on your data so that it responds in your data format. And that is where RAGS came through. RAG, as you would know, is Retrieval Augmented Generation. Here, the concept was to add your data in the form of vector. For example, Langchain, if I downloaded a PDF or HTML file explaining what was Langchain, it enhanced the capability of the large language model to respond back to you on what is Langchain. This was RAG, still very valid. Every single organization today uses RAG in some form or fashion to enhance the model to respond on company specific data, which is not potentially publicly available. So in this case, if I ask this question using RAG, what is Langchain? Most likely the model is going to respond in the right way. Now let's take a situation wherein you are working internally at your organization on a RAG application using Langchain. If you want to find out what is the status of the project of Langchain, on project on RAG, project on Langchain that is being worked at your organization, the model is not being able to get the latest information about the status of the project because the project might be in Jira or some kind of a project management tool. This is where the functionality of get getting the latest information is important. I'll give another example. Imagine that you have a shipment from amazon.com. You ordered something and you want to find out the shipment. You are not necessarily 
going to create a RAG application, which needs to be updated. The vector databases from RAG need to be updated every now and then to get the latest information. What you do is make an API call to a system, maybe salesforce.com or some kind of a shipment tracking system to understand when the shipment is gonna reach you. This is where the working across systems comes into play. Let's look at it. So coming to back to the previous example, if I wanna ask what is the status of the Langchain project in your organization, it's not a commonly used Langchain project, right? So it says Langchain project status is green because this system, which is an agent, is able to connect via an API to a system which can help you get that information on Langchain. It's very important for you to understand that the entire system is able to work across other systems. So in this case, it queries across APIs on the Jira platform and it gets you the latest information. It is very important to understand that this is what agents look like. Agents have the capability to connect with vector databases. Search, maybe a Google search for grounding, maybe a Wikipedia or through other APIs. It is able to orchestrate where to find the information and how to return back the information. The, the tool is, the tool set, which is here, is a, is a connection, is that endpoint, is that integration that is able to get you the latest information. Now imagine a situation. In your organization, for your customers, the customer facing group is working to get the latest information on the customer product, or maybe getting the latest information of a customer ticket. You're able to connect to Salesforce, Jira, to your databases, to your manuals, your documentation, and being able to provide that experience via a chatbot or a website bot or a Slack or any other chatting or any other communication mechanism that can help you improve that experience from your end user's perspective. An agent is defined as an application that understands how best to achieve your goals. As mentioned earlier, it should be able to create a plan, have a reasoning, should have a memory, and being able to orchestrate and work across systems using tools. Hmm. Slides, a little confusing. Let's see in real time how you can create agents on Google Cloud Platform. Now, before I go there and explain you creating an agent on a Google Cloud Platform, I'm going to show you how it works, the concept. The concept is you have infrastructure, models, and the platform, which provides, which is provided by Google Cloud Platform. And then you have agents that can be specifically doing a task, like for example, customer agent, facing customers, employee agent, where you can ask about your own leaves, you know, of the, you know, how many leaves do I have remaining for the year? You can have coding agents, data agents. There could be so many use cases involving agents. Let's look at how do you do that. So first of all, you would go to Google Cloud Platform, and I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. So you're going to go to Google Cloud Platform, and you're going to search on Agent Builder. If you search on Agent Builder, you would come to the screen. Then you got to create create an app. As soon as you create an app, you would have an option to search, to chat, to provide recommendation, but we are focusing on this agent. Click on select and provide a name. I'm gonna say GCP support agent demo. 
select a region, click on create. As soon as you click on create, you would be presented with a screen which says default generative agent. I'm going to say GCP support agent demo. This is the name of the agent. All right. Now let's look at step by step on what needs to be done. Number one, you got to provide a goal of this agent. What is this agent going to do? I'm going to create a GCP support agent which will help you answer any questions on GCP platform. Then you have instructions. How do you want this agent to perform, behave? You can have a sample, and this is the sample. Read the users, then ask how you can help them today, and details. This is how you pass parameters, but that is for later. On the left-hand side, let's, let's explore this. On the left-hand side, you have tools. Remember tools to be able to, let's save it first. Saving it and then go to tools. And remember tools to connect across systems. You have code interpreter. Code interpreter is an extension that can help you provide a syntactically correct code by creating a small container or an extension that runs the code to ensure at least the code is syntactically correct. If you click on create, you will have these options. Open API. This is where you have an ability to connect across systems using an API. For example, this one. There is a sample open API connection to these systems. Next, you can connect to weather.com, Jira, and I, have, I will have a few examples in the in the next few videos showing you this. Next, you have data store. Data store is a concept wherein you can connect to multiple data sets. Let's create a data store and show you. We're gonna come back in the next few videos to create a data store per se, but at least I'm, I can give you an example of data store. Now, a data store can be created and it can have a website. And don't get confused here. I will have multiple videos explaining you this, but you can have a website content. You can automatically crawl public website only if you own the website. That is for later. You can import BigQuery table, the data from BigQuery, cloud storage through an API, healthcare API, Cloud SQL, and so on and so forth. You have multiple sources of data sources, data stores that you can create. Once you create a data store, you can use this data store as the grounding. Remember RAG as a grounding source of information. And then you have function. You can write a function that can be able to generate responses for you. Again, that is for later. Again, sample here, get weather. This is a function to get the weather. But again, we will we'll figure this out probably in the next video. You have history. You can enable the conversation history. You have integrations. In the integrations, that means how you, how you can uh, access this agent is through Dialogflow Messenger, which is your chatbot, regular Messenger, Facebook, Line, Google Chat, Slack, so there are Discord, there are so many different ways, channels to communicate. And then you have the 3D avatar. This means that you can have a 3D avatar integrated as your chatbot, which will be animated responding back to the questions that are being asked by the users. So again, all of this, we will, some of these we'll look at probably in a later video. And then you go to settings. In the settings, you can create, you can set up logging and export all your chat history to BigQuery where you can track it. In Gen AI, you can select a model. Let's select a model flash and then I'm gonna set the temperature to 0 0.3 and you can enter band phrases. 
you can block safety filters, and then you have Git connection as well as security. So all of these options are available to you. We will explore some of these in the future, but let's create an agent first of all. So I'm gonna go to agent. Whoops, uh, probably we lost the Gen AI thing. Again, we're gonna say flash uh, 0 0.3, no banned phrases, but you can do that. I click on save, go back to agent. Now let's click on this agent and write the goals. So I have already an agent created for you uh, just to save time here. So this is an agent. I'm gonna expand this a little bit so that you see it clearly. So I wrote a GCP support agent. It says provide simple and easy to understand explanations, guide users through GCP process step-by-step, step, as well as offer authoritative information by linking official documentation. So that's the goal. The goal of the agent to be helpful, right, on GCP. And then this is the detailed step-by-step -step instruction. So first of all, you have three areas. User you don't have to follow this format. Format You can follow the format that you like. So first of all, ask and acknowledge the user's question. Next, break down GCP concept into digestible explanations. Furnish step-by-step -step instruction and always include links to relevant GCP documentation. And this is the tone. Use clear jargon-free language, blah, blah, blah. You can use this. And there are, again, as I said, sample. Now let's try it out. I'm going to say that, how do I deploy a Python application? And you would see here, Deploy Python application. It's a you can use Google App Engine. Nope, I don't want to do it. I want to deploy on Cloud Run, for example. It says, "Okay, would you like me to guide you through steps for deploying?" Yes, I want you to help me. And you see here, uh, yes. And it's, it, it guides you step by step. And I'll say, give me the links. Give me the reference documentation. And it gives you the reference documentation as well. So see here how, and you can tune it with examples as well here. So just save here. You can tune it with examples. You can create examples and show. But again, you run this, how, there you go. You can make changes as you want. So this was a very simple agent. Again, you have an, an option to connect with systems, have history, integrate as the front end, and you can set a lot of things in settings as well. So in the next few videos, we're gonna talk about multiple ways that you can apply agents in your, at your work. With that said, thank you for watching.